Hi everyone, welcome to part six of the history of Manchester City. We've got to 1934-1935. Please, if you're new to the channel, push your subscribe button, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Put the bell notifications, we know these uh, history vlogs that I do, city presents and city quizzes, etc. So let you know when any of these are coming out. Please hit that bell notification, please. Thumbs up is always appreciated. It's nice to get thumbs up. It's nice to be people out there. And uh, I know we get views and stuff we all do, but it's nice when you get a nice proportion of thumbs up as well. So it takes you a split second. That's very much appreciated. And tell all your friends. I'm still, you know, uh, more the merrier. And my uh, subscribers are growing very gradually, very slowly, but growing, which is more important, isn't it? Anyway, we left you last time, didn't we? At the end of the 33-34 season. And, of course... Manchester City won the FA Cup that season. And uh, the celebration, over a million to the homecoming, as I've told you. I mean, the celebrations went on for a week. There was even a, a, a lit bus that you would go around Manchester for a week afterwards with uh, various things on it. During a week of celebration, an illuminated bus journeyed around the city, covered in city's colours. On the front of the bus uh, was, uh, was the number City 2-1. And then obviously on the side was the Manchester coat of arms. So, I mean, it was a celebration. It did. It, did, it was amazing. I mean, that million plus is till now still still thought to be from from all accounts the largest ever homecoming. Even though we've we've had different ones from different teams like United, Treble, Liverpool's uh, last season after the Champions League, etc. Quoting a million figures and stuff like this. But uh, most people still think that's that's still the biggest one today that there has been. So. Obviously, high expectations, wasn't there, for 1934-35? So, yeah, crowds were good again. I mean, as you say, we've, we've never been let down with a crowd. Since you've always been up there, haven't you, in the top crowds in the country, in the English League. Um, and there was there's 50,000 crowds against Wednesday, Leeds, Stoke, Derby, all at the all at New Main Road, of course. But the, the biggest was actually against um, Arsenal. And at the time, it broke the record for the biggest crowd of 79,491. It was towards the end of the season. And City had been doing pretty well. It ended in, it ended in a 1-1 draw. Arsenal were actually first at the time. So it would have been nice for City to win that one. Uh, City were actually third. But it was a massive crowd and broke a new record. And City and Arsenal were both considered at that stage. I mean, Arsenal in the 30s was a fantastic decade for them. And City and Arsenal were, were, were rightly considered to be the biggest clubs in England um, at this point in time. Um, and there was also the first charity. City had won, obviously, the FA Cup. And Arsenal had won the league previously. So it was a chance for City to play in the first their first charity shield. And, uh, and then we played in November. But it was played at Arsenal's ground. It played at, uh, at Arsenal ground. And unfortunately, only, only a small crowd, 10,000 crowd. So it wasn't any any real shakes at that stage. And uh, unfortunately, City lost this 4-0 to Arsenal. So it wasn't the greatest uh, thing. But that was November. But after the 1-1 draw... Obviously, um, at Main Road, City did fade a little bit in the 34-35 season. Um, we did have a great start, but then we just faded. And uh, we, I think we won only two of our last 10 games. So we did struggle. In the FA Cup, uh, we lost 1-0 one, one to Spurs in the, first, in the third round, which was obviously now the first round. So that was disappointing. And the top scorer was Tilson. So I've got an image of uh, Tilson. And from the from the programs, I'll show these as I'm doing them. Obviously, I took stuff from Gary James's 125 years as well. The top scorer in 34 five was Fred Tilson with 18 goals from 34 league appearances, but four players had netted 13 or more goals this season. So again, we're scoring plenty of goals. The other three were Jimmy Heal, 13 from 27, Alec Hurd, 14 from 37, and of course Eric Brooks, 17 from 40. So there, there's just a, a picture of. Fred Tilson in action in the dark colours of City there during that period. So he was a, he was a top scorer, but like I say he was a little bit dis disappointed. We ended up fourth, obviously that season. So after after an early start, obviously we faded out a little bit. <clears throat> so on to the 1935-1936 season. There, uh, Busby had been playing for City, went to Liverpool, so that wasn't very very well appreciated. We did have obviously the arrival. Of uh, Peter Doherty, 
So Peter Doctor, we, we what was like was very close to a, a record transfer fee at the time of uh, ten thousand uh, pound. Just little comments on here. P Peter Doctor was signed at the time when the national transfer record stood at ten thousand eight hundred and ninety. So he was sold. He was bought for ten thousand. He made his debut on the twenty second of February against Preston. City lost three one. And Doherty heard a City fan voice his disappointment very clearly. £10,000, he shouted scornfully. You mean 10,000 cigarette cards. So, obviously, not the most auspicious to start for Mr Doherty, but uh, there you go. And it wasn't a great season after 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 34-35, which we did really well. Uh, we won the first five out of the six games, but we could only finish ninth eventually. A bit of, bit of a, a bit of a wish wash. There's actually a picture of uh, Frank Swift in action at uh, at Arsenal that very season, September 1935, as Frank Swift say, you know, the, like these goalies tend to do those days. A lot of these dangerous saving at feet, wasn't it? Seems not as often, doesn't often seem to happen as often these days, but it's a great action picture, that, isn't it? Uh, crowds were okay again, but obviously we weren't that great on the pitch, so they dropped a little bit. Uh, 45,000 turned up uh, against Sunderland, which was a one of the highest, well, the highest crowd of the season at Main Road. Uh, Sam Barker's joined us, which is on the thumbnail picture I showed you. Very stylish fullback who used to create things as well, so he would have gone on with Pep, wouldn't he? So Sam Barker's joined us at left back and was great. And did become our captain as well, and we he will get a mention again later on in um, in this. Little vlog, or very soon this little vlog. But yeah, we finished ninth in in Division One. Um, obviously, the FA Cup. We got to round five, but unfortunately, we were beaten away at Grimsby. I think who also recorded their record crowd at the time of twenty eight thousand. Again, City away from Main Road were very very popular. Still, a good, you know, as we did at uh, Main Road, we attracted large crowds uh, to the away games as well. Teams teams were they played entertaining football. Teams wanted to see it, so we did get large crowds. But 35-36, a bit of a damp squib of the season. It didn't really prepare us for what was going to happen in 1936-37. But obviously the, the facts of City being such a good team, I mean, there was actually a tour of Germany. Obviously, you can imagine this is the time of Hitler. And I, I do believe um, City, City. I'm not sure of the, the proof of this. I've not seen any images, but obviously the German players did the, the Hitler's, the Nazi salute, and City players refused to do it during the, the games. Uh, again, I've seen no proof saying they did do it but i have i have read that they didn't do it out of principle obviously and obviously it was 1936 so things were getting a bit hot weren't they with, with the germans and they actually played four or five german teams including the national team twice in the space of three or four days and they actually lost both of those games uh three two but that was, that was playing the german national team so it's quite a coup at the time because obviously i always thought they, they played this a little the season after for obvious reasons but no it was it was a see it was the actual actual friendlies before the 36-37 season. And it didn't start off too greatly. It was a bit of a, a difficult September and October. I mean, we've got Mr. Wilf Wilde was the manager then. Um, obviously, he'd been for a while, as you know, uh, if you watched the last, the last part of this thing. And they didn't do very well. And they actually were beaten for the first time in five seasons at, at Old Trafford. They hadn't been beaten since, by United since 1931. Uh, we actually were beaten at Old Trafford by United. So that was a bit of a shock. Um, and they just won three of the first 14 games in 1936-37. But Christmas saw a bit of a turnaround. I mean, we actually started with a 1-0 win against United at Main Road in front of a crowd of 64,862. And things started to, to improve all the time. Even by the time they played Arsenal and won 2-0, uh, they, they were the top two in the league. City, City and Arsenal were the top two. They beat Arsenal... 2-0, another, another massive crowd, 74,918. So we still went, City actually went top with a game in hand over Arsenal and Charlton, who were on the same points very late in the season. So it ended up where literally before the game before the last, they had a chance to win the league. Uh, and they had a home game against Sheffield. Well, it was just called Wednesday then. They weren't called Sheffield Wednesday. So 55,000 turned up. Perhaps could have been a bit higher because we could have won the league that day. Um turned up for that game and obviously there's a there's a match report of um in the chef this the sheffield wednesday game which was on um, april the 24th 1937 this was the day that city 
clinched their first ever Football League Championship. Early in the season, City had been decimated 5-1 at Hillsborough when City had no thoughts of the Championship. So that's when we are having a really bad run because they were in the bottom half of the division. But under the captaincy of Sam Barkas, again, we've mentioned before, City had gathered speed like an express train in the second half of the season to culminate this great triumph for a 55,000 crowd as they stretched a tremendous unbeaten run to 20 league games. So they went unbeaten for 20 league games. Eric Brook hit one of the hardest shots he'd ever conjured up for the first goal after we set up by Peter Doherty. And I wonder what that fan was saying then. And then Fred Tilson scored the second again with a chance created by Peter the Great. And then Doherty himself, Doherty himself made it 3-0. Wednesday pulled one back before Brook completed the score in the last minute. And then the celebration started. The crowd swarmed on the pitch, would not leave until Chairman Bob Smith and skipper Sam Barkas appeared to receive their applause for the milestone win by the Blues. So there's an actual image there of the winning team, the various directors at the back as well. Fantastic trophy, isn't it? That absolutely superb trophy. I mean, the regular side that season was Swift, Dale, Barkas, Percival, Marshall, Bray, Tolsland, Hurd, Tilson, Do Doherty and Brooke. So that is the winning. So there's a superb. Look at the size of that thing. It's amazing, isn't it? Wonderful picture of City celebrating that. And obviously... If you look in this this old book, it's uh, like the pictorial thing. This is like all City's history. Obviously, the headline, Manchester City, Coronation Champions, Cup home. And obviously, this this was after the Shep Wednesday win, so they hadn't actually clicked. Obviously, it's not a game to play. Um, but obviously, the headlines were about. And it was the Coronation year of George the Sixth of the Queen. Do you remember the Queen Mother? Um, it was the Coronation year of, of that as well. So that was why the word Coronation. Uh, comes into that. A City, a City win the league for the very first time. We had a few goals here, didn't we? We come very close on three or four occasions, but uh, very memorable to win that league. Uh, in the FA Cup, it wasn't a bit disappointing in the FA Cup. We obviously, we were, we were, we were actually uh, put out by Millwall from the third division. Obviously, that was the quarter final. That was the first time a third division club had reached the semi final. Obviously, Millwall beat us, uh, unfortunately, at their ground. So, there was thousands on the pitch celebration, celebrating at the den. So, obviously not the greatest time. But 36-37 would go down in history as the a, a great season for Manchester City. So, of course, it would lead us now to 37-38. Could we follow up that championship season? But, guess what? We had another Charity Shield game to play, didn't we? Obviously, the, the winners of the FA Cup the previous season, obviously it wasn't it wasn't Millwall, uh, was Sunderland. And so we played Sunderland, being the champions at Main Road. And we've in front of a 20,000 crowd, which is pretty good, uh, we beat Sunderland and won the Charity Shield for the very first time as well in 1937-38. But the season, inconsistencies, not great. And from February, March, April, it just went from bad to worse. And we did find ourselves in a little bit of trouble. We had about seven teams that were under the threat of relegation. So a year after winning the league, it's a typical city, obviously, we end up in the relegations, a threat of relegation. But it wasn't all over. We could still save ourselves. We had a trip to Huddersfield, who again was still a pretty good team, Huddersfield at that time. A draw would keep both City and Huddersfield. Huddersfield was struggling as well. I mean, a draw would actually suit both City and Huddersfield, would have guaranteed staying in the first division. And Despite this, for some reason, obviously the players didn't get together on and decide this because Huddersfield actually won the game 1 0. And City were left forlorn at the end of it because they went back to the changing rooms. And even though there's another four or five teams who all had to win to better City, the teams that needed to win did. And then City ended up in depression after a year after winning the league title, were relegated to the second division. Absolute, absolute shambles. Absolute can't you just you couldn't write it, could you? Really, so that's how it was. I mean, there's a, a great image from um, the end of that season with uh, Sam Barkas again and Gordon Clark, and it was in it with um, Char Charlton Athletic. It's just a great action picture. Obviously, things still we could still turn it around then, but obviously, we just we just didn't manage to do it. Uh, so City were relegated, and to add thing, make things worse, United were promoted the same season. They were actually promoted back to the first division when really and City were relegated. And a lot of pundits, a lot of historians think this is the time when that City, the City and United uh, 
link would never quite be the same again. That uh, obviously City's dominance over most of the since its creation, really, from from the 18, 1880s, 1890s, City's even though United have won a won a few a couple more trophies, etc. City has always, always been the bigger team, always seemed to have dominated. But City point to this 37-38 season and, and the relegation after winning the league has, has been a time when it all started. You know, things wouldn't be the same again with City and United and City would lose out even though we'll see. We still did okay during the, the war years, which was going to come up. Uh, we had a little bit of revenge in the FA Cup. We built Millwall, We beat Millwall after a replay, after they put us out the UFO. But again, we got to the quarterfinals and lost to Aston Villa 2-1. Uh, and Fred Tilson, the, the, obviously we've talked about, left to go to Northampton. So there's even more depression for City as well as as well as being relegated. But it was it was sort of knocking on a bit by then anyway. It was it was aging a little bit. So we left as a 38-39 season, which which started. I mean, it didn't start very well in Division Two. I mean, usually we'd, we'd done all right, haven't we? We've been relegated before. We've been we've been up there, if not winning promotion within the. the the year we went down, certainly within the year after, uh, but we only won two out of the first 11, which raised uh, real concerns. Um, but from November, things turned around, but obviously it was too late then to actually close the gap, and we, had, we ended up finishing fifth, although not many points behind the runners-up that year, so it wasn't too bad by the end of it, since City finishing fifth. Uh, there's also a picture of that a game at the Den again, again at the Den. Did I say the alarm? Yeah, that's... Uh, So that's 13th of March, 39. City taking Mill. So that's 13th of March, 39. The year war started, obviously, but the season before. Uh, Mill, Mill then joined the final league season before the outbreak of World War II. So that's action from the den there. And obviously, I don't there's it probably was trouble then, to be honest with you. Like there, like there was more modern times, but that's a great image of the, of the den in 1939. Crowd-wise, City were in the second division, but there were still six highest crowds in, in English football. Uh, m more than 17 or 18 of, all, of the first division clubs. So there's only, uh, I think they were just a, about 100 below Liverpool on average, but they were ahead of teams like United and Chelsea and West Ham who were all in the first division. They were still getting bigger crowds. So even though it's 31,000 average, that was still bigger than, than most first division crowds. So 38, 39 was a bit disappointment, obviously. So 39, 40, we were hoping for something, weren't we? But the problem with that, obviously, is uh, because of the world's uncertainties. Uh, war was declared three games, three games in, and obviously the season was suspended, which led to a, an immediate ban on large crowds at various things. And apparently, some city wags did say that it won't affect United very much at Old Trafford because they don't get many large crowds. So that was one of the little wags at the time uh, led those comments. So yeah, City managed three games. I think they won one, drew, drew one, and lost one before. Before only fifteen thousand. I mean, people get. You know, football wasn't really at the top of everyone's mind by then. It was 15,000 at Main Road for the visit of Chesterfield and the games were cancelled after that. Um, which meant there was like little mini leagues set up and obviously it all regionalised again. I mean, City did manage in that 39-40 season um, to to win the first war derby, if you like, for a 4-0 win to City with only 7,000 at Old Trafford because the crowds were being restricted as well. That was eased a little bit over time, so they, they did allow bigger crowds at games just, just for morale purposes, etc. But obviously there was, a, there was a limit to what crowd you could have in the game. There was a War Cup um, also implemented, so, you know, it's like, again, regionalised, if you like, playing in this War Cup. And guest players, obviously... Players were signing up, players were signing on to do special duties, etc. So during during the war year, City actually had 82, 82 guest players play, play for City during that period, which is a, an amazing number. And obviously in the War Cup, we played United and we actually beat them 1-0 at Old Trafford, but they beat us 2-0 at Main Road. So we'll less said about that, the better, I think. 40-41, obviously the war's raging. <laughs> Uh, all games were now being played within seven days. So if you played, if you played Manchester United or you played Everton, you always you played them the following week, home and away. So they're all they're all being played that. And what they did in 1940-41, they had a wonderful idea of getting rid of the point system. So there's no points. The winner was the team with the best goal average, not goal difference, goal average. So obviously, if they scored sixty, 
and obviously let dirty in the goal the goal average would have been two so obviously based on that actually city finished third that season they did pretty well but they'd had it goal difference as opposed to goal average so it'd been city scored lots and lots of goals and scored far more goal had a higher goal difference than anyone else he would have actually won that league but obviously that wasn't the way it was decided unfortunately um in march 1941 well obviously we're at war aren't we so you can guess what may have happened in march 1941 um, I've got an image of uh, Old Trafford, obviously, being, being in Trafford Park, a major industrial area, obviously, there was obviously a bomb at the main stand there, obviously, fires had broken out, etc, etc, so United obviously couldn't play uh, Old Trafford for a while, which led to them, of course, City offered the main road immediately for a rent of 5,000 per annum and plus a share of gate receipts. And in, in reply to that, City played their reserve, because obviously the reserve games were going on while City were away. So obviously City played their reserve games at the cliff. So that was part of the deal as well. So yeah, City United to come to main road and we bailed them out again. So there you go. That's what we're like. Unfortunately, the, they've never really reciprocated over recent years after with the kindness perhaps towards City. Yeah, we got to the quarterfinal of a War Cup again. Nothing, nothing great to shout about. We actually played United three times during the 40-41 season, and we actually uh, won a home game four-one. We lost away two-nil, but the third game again because uh, at home we lost seven-one. But as I said, what the effect of guest players was, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Players were in and out, coming back from special duties. So, yeah, we'll not we'll, we'll gloss over that seven-one victory for United. It's not in the record books anyway, because it's uh, as a, as a thing. Because obviously it was. Uh, Really, these sort of things are more, more or less friendlies rather than, than competitive games because of all the all the messing about with players, etc. Uh, so again, 41-42. Uh, the regional leagues became more complicated. They couldn't get any more complicated. Points were back, so they must have fell out with the goal scored idea. Uh, and there were 38 northern clubs now who played in different leagues. Then these were eventually compiled into a table of 38 teams, it was 38 team table with City finishing 17th in 1941-42 and uh, the second half of this season was just a free for all, clubs just arranged their own games like you know can you play us this week, can you play us next week and it just become a bit bit ludicrous really uh, and City didn't even feature, I mean, even though with they finished um, 17th out of 38 the first half of the season, obviously the second half of the season they had to play a minimum of 18 games and they only played, I think it was 17 so they didn't even qualify for a position in the table, so again there's no relegation or anything like that, but because of the way it was done, a team that was supposed to be playing um, obviously couldn't play them so they ended up only not playing enough games to be featured in the final table 42-43 You've also got the added option. You've always got the added problem now of um, players obviously coming back, going abroad, coming back with serious injuries, even on special duties where there were airway wardens and things like this. So I know players were dying. I mean, this this was uh, absolutely dreadful things happening, as you'd expect during a world war. Um, 1942-43, the 48 team table. There's 48 teams, and City City pre Christmas. Uh, were 30th of the 48 teams. But the way it worked out, in the second half of the season, every, everything was sort of ignored. And we've actually finished third in the second half of the season in the table, even though we were 30th out of 48 in the first. So, 42-43, and we're still going on, isn't it? 1943-44. Uh, finished 17th for this 38 team table city finished 17th and 19th in the second half of the season they actually did reach the nor the semi-final of the war cup in the, in the northern section but there's not going to be any war cup glory for city between up to 1944 anyway and um, obviously city player george smith which i should have an image of him he was actually in africa uh, he signed up but he was actually in africa and this is like typical of what was happening at the time. And he was actually uh, injured by friendly fire. They believe a, a South African unit. Uh, he was shot accidentally uh, in, in his arm, uh, somewhere in his arm. So I would just read what, what's said here about George Smith. 
While there, friendly fire instance saw a bullet enter his right arm above his elbow, travel down his arm, past his elbow, and come out again after travelling a good six or seven inches through his arm. He was desperately unlucky to have been fired at by servicemen fighting on the same side. Smith spent some time recovering in Africa before being able to return to Manchester for the rest of his of his life. His right hand and fingers were permanently rigid in a clasping fashion, while his arm had two large indentations where the bullet entered and exited. The path of the bullet down his arm was visible, but as a forward, Smith knew that it was his feet <laughs> and head that determined the main aspects of his play, not his arm. Nevertheless, the city and management insisted on George performing a number of trials during 1944. And we'll return to George Smith, obviously, in the next one. But, um, yeah, because it'd be quite interesting how he did in those trials and how he went on and what he did for City, obviously, when he came back from that. So that was 1943-44. And there we go. So from the from winning the league to relegation to Division Two to, to the football being decimated by, well, I'm doing it, I'm doing this at the, the time of COVID nineteen, and obviously, you know, similar similar repercussions. Football's been decimated. Obviously, the, the season thirty nine forty was only abandoned after three games, so we haven't got perhaps got the problems we've got in twenty twenty. But uh, interesting to note the comparisons as well. And there's a thing on. The coronation year champions in 1937. Little little picture there, and all it's first division champions. So I've all the they took all the letters and they've wrote something. So I'll just finish with this. Coronation year, Manchester City coronation year champions 1937. First and foremost in football fame, it's Manchester City who play the game right from the start without much luck, showing opponents their determined pluck. They're now on top and safely stuck. Well, not quite. Doherty, the star, who we praised so loud, and the net placed three against Preston Proud. Valuable points, which were two of the best, inspired the teammates, put Arsenal at rest. Swift in goal, three seasons without fail, is strongly supported by Barkas and Dale. Our halfbacks, Percival, Marshall, and Bray, noteworthy players who have won the day. Century of goals, put that in your book. Yeah, we did actually score a century of goals the season we got relegated as well, believe it or not. Uh, century of goals, put that in your book, helped by Tolson, Heard, Tilson, and Brook. Arsenal of North, our neighbours in distress. There you go, Arsenal of the North again. Manchester United have failed to impress. Perhaps someday they'll have an 11 in 1997. <laughs> how prophetic is that? How prophetic, how prophetic is that? <laughs> Perhaps someday they'll have an 11 in 1997. Absolute classic. Talking about United. Our manager and trainer took part in the fight. No wonder it was Wilfred wild with delight. So Will Wild again. Sunderland Arsenal Preston. What a sight. So that was a, a just a little poem from there. So yeah, hope you enjoyed that uh, look. Obviously, we'll be back with part seven looking at 1944-45 onwards, although the league doesn't get quite back to normal for two or three years. Um, obviously, not immediately after the war. I think it's a year or two break as well. But um, we're going to look at 43-44 to 1952-53. And as I said, things start to change. City are perhaps not the power they were, but that doesn't mean we're not going to get involved in certain things. But obviously, the, the rise of Manchester United was to come Obviously, after the war, and it all it all seemed to all seemed to stem from that relegation. If we just survived that season, perhaps things would have been different. Who knows? And that for those words in that poem about United nineteen ninety seven. It was a little bit earlier than that, wasn't it? But um, how how you know what is he Nostradamus? Anyway, hope you watch. Yeah, hope you enjoy watching that. Please check all the links below for other cities and vlogs, past and present, and quizzes, etc. And thanks for joining me today. Thirty minutes, so not too bad. I know you enjoyed it, and I'm, I hope I can bring. I brought you some entertainment. It's a nice image actually, worldwide there, showing the trophies he's won. So he's got a treble ante. Obviously, he got the the league title, the FA Cup, and the charity shield. So yeah, Wilf Wild, the first man at City manager to do so. It's been done since, hasn't it? Anyway, thanks for watching. Whatever you got to do with the rest of the day, have a great one. Please follow me on Twitter at Nostalgia underscore Movie and also at Charles Deneen. So either of those is all about City and obviously I do links to film, vlogs and TV dramas, etc. If you're any interest in that, if, you, if you're bored, please check. Again, there's some links below. And obviously on Facebook at Burn Deneen with links to moviegamenostalgia.com, our little website for... Uh, old rare DVDs, posters from the 90s and 2000s, movie posters, and old rare retro board games. Anyway, 
look after each other. That's all I'm saying at the moment. Not just your family, friends, and yourself. Make sure you're looking after each other. Let's all look after each other. And we'll get through as I'm recording this. And I say, in months to come, perhaps I'll look back at this and, uh, a bit, you know, we'll just remember it. And it's be a, it'd be a horrific, but but uh, hopefully sorted memory. And we can all get on back to our lives to some extent. Anyway, thanks for watching this. And hopefully you join me for something again very, very soon. This is Bernard saying goodbye for now. Bye-bye.